quick quiz. What does this SpongeBob Theory video and this mutant cow have in common? That's not a joke, by the way. It's a legitimate question. What could possibly unite this beefy blob with our yellow porous friend? Well, obviously, they're parts of an alien conspiracy to clone frustrated online creators. Duh. YouTube is a strange place sometimes. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that wants to see significant growth of that subscriber number. Actually, you know what? That's not true. It's an antiquated metric from an earlier time on the platform. YouTube knows at this point if you care about the channel or not, so you can just ignore that subscribe button down there. Uh, seriously, do not touch it. No, stop it. Do not touch that subscribe button. Stop it. You clicked it, didn't you? Ugh. A couple weeks ago, we started untangling the fleshy web of lies that is Happy Meat Farms. And ARG mystery that's hosted right here on YouTube.com. All of it posted on the channel, This Place Is Not Happy. Now, at first glance, HMF looks like any upstanding meat production company. Wide landscape shots of golden fields with grazing cows, business-friendly infographics promoting their services, corporate welcome videos full of one-frame jump scares and hidden passwords. You know, the usual. You see, once you start peeling back the layers of encrypted codes hidden within both the YouTube channel and its associated website, you find a world of horrific scientific experiences experimentation, deformed animals, human testing, all of it tied to some kind of alien overlord simply known as Mother. Last video, we began our quest to expose this alien conspiracy, gaining access to the website's employee portal and learning that the latest human trial, H0027, mutated too far, managing to escape from the Happy Meat Farm containment facility. So, with a hyper-intelligent monster on the loose and Mother growing increasingly hungry, we found ourselves looking through a second video frame by frame to uncover a new access code. The password to the company's R&D webpage. So let's jump back into this cursed company website to figure out what's really going on, shall we? As soon as you land on the R&D page, you'll notice that we aren't in Kansas anymore. The soft colors of the employee and customer facing pages are ripped away, replaced with just plain white text over a black background. By looking at the page, we can actually see that the R&D department is currently working on two major projects. The first is one that we're already familiar with, Project Chimera. This is what we've been seeing via the leaked footage over on YouTube, experiments meant to increase the amount of living biomass in an animal so it can be sent to Happy Meat Farms HR. They do this by injecting some sort of foreign DNA into the test subjects. Where is that DNA from? Unclear, because the text has been redacted. It would seem like not even upper-level employees are able to get this classified information. However, if you highlight that white redacted text, it actually reveals what's written there. Why is no one good at their jobs? Anyway, it reveals that this DNA has come from none other than Mother herself. It's her DNA that seems to be causing the extreme growth, increased intelligence, and also overwhelming aggression that we've been witnessing in these test subjects. Under the project summary, there's also an incident report which provides some additional detail on the escaped subjects that we've learned about through the YouTube videos. While the first two, an acidic chicken and spider cow, have been contained, human subject H0027 is still at large. According to the report, during their escape, H0027 stole files from the main server, likely meant to expose the company. My guess? The missing files are the videos that have been uploaded to YouTube and H0027 is the voice that we hear at the end of that second leaked tape. Don't feed the other ongoing R&D project listed here is Project Vulnerability, an effort to introduce diseases into the population using intentionally contaminated meat products. These diseases are intended to create weakness in the population that Mother can later exploit to create her so-called New World Order. And, uh, that's about it. Gotta admit, for being two layers deep, I expected a bit more. That said, we still haven't broken into the most secretive area of them all, HR. I mean, that's the place where all the successful experiments go, and the place they never return from, so... Something's gotta be going on over there. Who knows, maybe even Mother itself. Luckily, Subject H0027 gave us a final leaked video on the This Place Is Not Happy YouTube page. Happy Meat Farm's HR orientation video. Perfect, finally we get ourselves a sneak peek behind the padlocked steel doors. In the video, we're told that there are three rules every HR employee has to follow. Don't touch anything, don't look at anything, which is weird, because the rest of the video is a tour of the HR department specifically asking us to look at things. And finally, have fun. Great to be in a positive work environment. The HR building looks to be abandoned. However, on the tour, we see all the things that you'd expect. Desks, lackluster birthday decorations, rabid mutant dogs. They even have a creepy IT guy named Jared who works out of the industrial refrigerator. Like I said, all the normal office stuff. Of course, there's some unusual things here too. A room full of hair, walls of flesh, mouse traps lining the walls. And finally, the tour ends with us getting to dine alongside the big boss woman herself, Mother. 
So it seems like that's Happy Meat Farm's primary goal, using all the successful biomass experiments to feed this giant tentacled monstrosity. Quick side note, is this technically cannibalism? I mean, her own DNA is being used to make these creatures grow. Does that count as eating yourself? I can only eat things that literally have a part of me inside of them. That is a weird dietary restriction, I gotta say. Then again, who am I to judge? I don't really like mushrooms. So who's the real weird one here? I guess it's just reassuring to know that she approves of her own product. We're told once again that Mother is is pleased before we cut back to a video of Ramona Bynes, head of Happy Meat Farm, thanking us for our support. Except, something goes wrong. The video distorts, and we hear a voice tell us, It's not me. Now this is huge. By using the identifying word me, it informs us of two things. First, that we shouldn't believe that the woman on screen, Ramona, is what she says. That somehow she's a clone of Ramona. And secondly, that H0027, the person speaking to us through these leaked videos, she isn't just any volunteer employee, she's Ramona Bynes herself. It's not the only evidence pointing towards that conclusion either. When the deformed dogs are shown during the HR video, we see I never wanted this to happen appear within on-screen glitches. A sentiment that's completely in line with Ramona's original goal of creating a farm that gives animals the best quality of life. Later, when we visit the Pink Room, a recreation of a child's bedroom, the name Ramona is posted over the bed. But H0027 comments here, how did they get every detail right? This is Ramona's childhood bedroom. And for H0027 to know that the details were all correct, it means that she has to be the real Ramona. She was captured by her own company, she was experimented on, and then mutated beyond recognition, only to be replaced by some sort of a clone, an exact replica so that no one would notice that she had gone missing. Luckily, this real Ramona did manage to escape, grabbing the video evidence off the servers to expose their plot. And that's not all that we see by going slowly through this video. Further examination reveals pink letters that are written on the walls throughout the HR department, WF71A, which gives us a password and access to the final employees only section, HR. On this page, we primarily learn about the third and final Happy Meat Farm initiative, Project Nightmare. We're told that mothers apparently had a bunch of kids over the years, Mazel Tov and her, and that these children are the reason that Happy Meat Farm needs hosts. It's left vague, but the children need to digest something from each host in order to reach their final form. Only then can the mother and children share the digested stuff and then be reconnected. There's just one catch, though. We're told that these children can't just take over by force. They have to be willingly handed control by the host. That's where Project Nightmare comes in. A series of psychological torture that's meant to weaken a host and make them more compliant. The hair room, the flesh room, all part of the nightmare. But what exactly is being digested here? What is all of that redacted text? If they've already broken down the will and identity of the host, what else is there to give? And what does any of this have to do with reconnecting with Mother? Well, loyal theorists, that's where the SpongeBob conspiracy finally comes in. Right at the start of all of this, on the very first page of the HMF website, there's a small blurb that mentions Happy Meat Farms sponsoring up-and-coming online creators. And these aren't just random made-up names like Ramona Bynes. These are actual real-world creators with actual real-world channels and videos that you can watch right now. Channels like The Cynical Critic, Filmmaker Wesley Harold, Conspiracy Carl, and of course, the SpongeBob guy, Alex Bale. Happy Meat Farms is an animal farming company that offers a variety of different delicious meat products. It seems like they're connected to this entire Happy Meat Farm conspiracy, but how? What exactly is going on here? To date, Alex Bales released nine Spongebob theories, and they start largely how you'd expect. Well-crafted deep dives into the lore of Spongebob, looking at the exact sort of stuff that we'd cover in a typical episode. Are the characters the result of atomic testing? Is this all part of an underwater documentary? Why are there multiple rulers of the sea? But from theory number three onward, we start to see a much bigger story start to unfold. At moments throughout the video, Alex begins talking to a monster hiding in the shadows of his garage, a fleshy tentacle monster that he calls the Muse. Great, glad we're on the same page. You know, I'm, I'm sorry about all the shouting and the craziness. You know, I won't have anything against you personally. I think if we just communicated better, we could have, you know, avoided a lot of the issues that we were having. I'm glad we finally have an understanding. And we see that this title of Muse is very appropriate for the creature. This thing in the shadows is the one that's providing him with the Spongebob theories. Can, can we get one of those? One of those Muse things? Because having someone just deliver the scripts to us on a silver platter would be pretty sweet. However, the Muse doesn't do it for free. It requires feeding, specifically raw meat. Yeah, about the Muse thing I was just talking about, still totally worth it. Buy a bunch of meat at the grocery next time you're there. So at this point, 
you know I gotta call it out. A monster that hides in the shadows, has long fleshy tentacles, and requires large amounts of raw meat to sustain itself? Now, why would that possibly sound familiar? Hmm. And while some of us would welcome a script delivering meat monster in their garage, Alex apparently sees things differently. It's clear that he isn't exactly thrilled by the arrangement. No, no, th this is not what I wanted, okay? This is, this isn't worth it. We are done. My boy, we both know you can't go back now. Okay, this is the last time that I want you out of this house. Not only do we see this in the narrative moments of the videos themselves, but his cry for help is even hidden in the channel's banner. That might look like just a black image, but good theorists know that black images are always worth checking. By cranking up the exposure, you can see the words, don't feed the muse. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not down on the farm anymore. This is a whole separate related ARG dedicated to the muse takeover. He's trapped by it, forced to make more and more spots. SpongeBob theories despite his creative frustrations, and he's not alone. YouTube channel banners have to be made to fit all different devices that you might want to watch on, so what you see by watching on mobile or desktop is just a tiny fragment of the complete image on there. There's a much bigger image that exists that no one ever really gets to see unless they're watching the channel on a television, and even then, I, I don't know if I've ever actually found it used on a television. Anyway, pulling the entire banner image is a bit of a hassle. You have to go into the source code and then find the lines about 21. 20 wide TV banners, then you gotta fix the URL manually, but anyway, if you manage to do all of that with Alex's banner image, you actually get yourself a second secret message hidden there outside of the typical line of view. They are everywhere. Loyal theorists, there's more than one muse, but if they're out there, where are they? Before Alex's fifth SpongeBob theory, he uploaded a short horror film called Late Night Snack. It did fine, 200,000 views, which is great, at least until you compare it with the SpongeBob theories that can get upwards of 10 million views. To add insult to injury, another YouTube channel, The Cynical Critic, real name Mark Mayhew, did a review on that very short, digging into how bad it was and really pushing for Alex to just stick to the SpongeBob theory stuff that he's good at. Alex, go back to making SpongeBob theory videos. No. No one wants to see your awful horror film. Admittedly, it's a really harsh review, but if you stay to watch the whole review until the end, you start to notice black liquid dripping from the ceiling vent. The same black liquid that we see appear in Alex's fifth SpongeBob theory. Black goo that comes from a muse. So it would seem that the cynical critic also has himself a muse in the background. And wait, wasn't Mark also one of the creators that was sponsored by Happy Meat Farm? Now you start to see how these puzzle pieces come together. During the cynical critics responding to hate comments video, we see a brief flash of his Gmail account. Based on the subject lines in the email previews, we get basically this character's entire backstory. It explains that his mother has lost her health insurance and can't afford to pay it. He also appears to have had a falling out with his business partner, Anthony, because he started to lean heavily into clickbait and aggressively negative videos. It's almost like someone, or something, has given him advice on how to make his channel more successful. And wouldn't you know it, one email later, it's a receipt for a bunch of raw meat. Looks like someone ignored the warnings and fed the muse. Shortly after that, we see a notice that Anthony has disappeared, before finally, the big stuff. Happy Meat Farm emails wanting a sponsorship. Ah, forget your best friend's untimely disappearance. It is all about that moolah, baby. Hashtag spawn. The story becomes even more explicit with his final upload, why 1313 Paradox Street is an instant classic. Here, Mark's reviewing a short film that was produced by, who knew, H. MF Entertainment. Happy Meat Farm is at it again. In this video, we see the cynical critic trying to escape the muse, only for the muse to say this. He was being a bad friend. He serves a better purpose now. He belongs to mother now, and so will you. A tentacle launches out from the darkness and grabs him. We cut to a smiling, cynical critic ending his video, black liquid dripping from his nose. And while I could tell you what you're seeing here, I might as well just show it to you. If you stop the video at 7 minutes and 9 seconds, you find the answer. Hidden text that reads, Phase 3 complete, host assimilated, begin digestion, awaiting reconnection. And you see, this is Project Nightmare. Hosts being targeted and manipulated by these muses, who then go on to manipulate 
manipulate other hosts. Mark, the cynical critic, is broken down by the pressure to earn money while his mother struggles with medical bills. He kills his partner in a disagreement. The guilt and pressure that he's feeling ultimately push him into willingly giving up to the monster. And in the end, he's left there on camera as a smiling, posing corpse, responsible for churning out new content. It's the exact same thing that we saw happen with Ramona Bynes, original founder of HMF. They're consumed, digested, assimilated, and cloned, made into a smiling, talking head for the camera. A smiling head that then turns the attack onto someone else. That's why Mark's reviews openly attack and antagonize Alex Bale. It's psychological warfare. The Muse is trying to break down Alex, get him to succumb. It's Project Nightmare. And despite resisting for a long time, even Alex succumbs. In his ninth Spongebob conspiracy theory, the final shot is of him being consumed, literally eaten by a replica of himself. Except what we know of Alex is gone. Only the Spongebob guy remains. Now, these sorts of messages and mini-mysteries are hidden throughout both Alex and Cynical Critics videos, of course, but also on other channels too. Conspiracy Carl, Paradox 1313, Sonic the Blue Rat, the list goes on and on. Some of them require ciphers, others require you to match the words in the script with the numbers that appear on screen, but all of them refer to these phases, making the hosts compliant, planting spores, eventual digestion, just like we read about on the Happy Meat Farms website. And speaking of that website, if you still weren't convinced that these two ARGs were connected, I decided to check the website banner for Happy Meat Farms just like I did for Alex Bale's channel. And guess what I found? Behind where the text box usually is, there was a mutant cow and the word Muse written across it. Clear as day. Boom! Case closed, theorists. These YouTubers are 100% being digested by mother's children, the Muses. So, knowing what we know now, I ask again, what is being digested exactly? I'm supposing it's passion, creativity, maybe some level of ethics? These creators, for various reasons, sought fame and fortune, but wound up turning to creatively unfulfilling clickbait content. They got their success, but the grind of audiences only being interested in one specific type of content has caused them to become lost, replaced with a soulless clone who's successful, but really is just a shadow of their former self, making lifeless videos not because they want to, but because it's all anyone else seems to care about. All of it in service of a greater, powerful monster, the YouTube alg- I mean, mother. With one final upload coming in 2023 to end the Muse saga, I suspect it's gonna be a bittersweet conclusion. Sure, Alex is gonna manage to get past his Muse and take control back of the channel for himself, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be a happy ending. YouTube and the algorithm are still gonna remain. Happy Meat Farm and Mother are still gonna be there, finding new hosts, new creators that are gonna make the content that they want to push on the platform, stuff that they can put higher paying ads on in order to feed their insatiable appetite. Will the viewers still stick around for the content that he wants to make, defying the algorithm? That's the question he's gonna ask, and that's the answer we'll have to see. So theorists, if you take anything away from this episode, it's that we all have our own part to play in this. Sure, we can point fingers at YouTube and the algorithm blaming them for empty, lifeless content, but those systems feed off of us, the viewers. We tell those programs what we watch. Unless we're talking about shorts, in which case that was forced onto us. Anyway, if one of your favorite creators tries to make something new, give it a go. Watch it. Support them. The first time is gonna be a little rough, but by supporting them, we allow them to keep going, to hone that idea into something incredible. You want proof? It's right here in these two ARGs. I mean, they've been a wild ride. The puzzles, the story, the message, all of it absolutely fantastic, but it is very different from what people expect of Alex's usual content. As time's gone on, though, and he's received support for it, you can literally see the quality, the puzzles, the story all getting better. So do your part and at least try to support the creators that you love, whatever they decide to do, because you never know what awesome story you might get out of it. And Alex, go and win this one for humanity, buddy. I'm looking forward to the big conclusion to all of this. I'm sure, there's gonna be plenty of meat on the bone for me to chew on. Or, you know, if you get bored, you could always do more SpongeBob theories over here. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. If you're already subscribed to the channel, thanks. It is great to see so many people invested in what we do here over at Theorist. So I'd like to repay you by helping you guys invest in other brands, more specifically, their stocks. And it's all thanks to today's sponsor, Public.com. I don't know about you, but it feels like everywhere I look these days, I'm constantly being reminded about the stock market. Some online controversy kicks off, we're told that the stocks for those brands are going down. Elon Musk makes a tweet, suddenly every news tuber is telling us that the stocks are going up. I mean, watching Mark Zuckerberg turn meta into a 
trash fire of burning cash is probably the internet's best programming these days. But while we may be constantly exposed to those stock market shifts, it actually makes the idea of investing in stocks that much more intimidating. That is real money that you're putting on the line. I was scared to join the stock market for years. But you see, that's where public.com can actually help. Because they're an investment platform that helps people be better investors. The key word there is help. They want to educate and inform everyday people to make smart investment decisions. That's why they allow you to follow other investors so you can make educated decisions by watching other people before you decide to pull the trigger. I'm on there. Just search for at MatPatGT and you can see what trends I'm choosing to follow. And using the information from me and everyone else on public, you'll be able to make smart decisions about what stocks you want to support. So, if you want to get started, then public.com has got a surprise for you. If you go to public.com slash MatPat, M-A-T-P-A-T, or you just click the link in the top line of the description and create an account, you'll get a free stock that is worth up to $300. And I'm sure that some of you out there are saying, ah, Matt, Pat, I wish you told me about this deal sooner. I've been trading stocks somewhere else. Well, don't worry about that one, friends, because public.com's got you covered there, too. For a limited time, when you sign up, you can get up to $10,000 when you transfer your account from another brokerage, depending on the amount. So not only can you get up to $300 worth of free stock just for signing up, but you can also have a chance of getting up to $10,000 if you're moving your account from somewhere else. And you get to keep all your current investments. That is a win, 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 as far as I'm concerned. So there's really no reason not to go head on over to public.com slash or just check out the description down below to create your account today.